Biden has already announced he and Obama will rally for Fetterman next week on November 5th. So they're bringing in Obama now to go with Biden. It's the same day that Trump will campaign with Dr. Oz. And Dr. Oz joins us tonight. Uh, and, sir, it's good to have you on. Um, the Biden and Kamala campaigning against you probably going to help you in the polls, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm not sure what the game plan is over there. Uh, my main focus right now is to make sure everyone appreciates how John Fetterman's extreme positions are out of touch with Pennsylvania values. And the fact that he couldn't defend those dangerous policies on Tuesday night at the, at the debate is concerning to a lot of folks. It should be. And I mean, I can give you tons of examples, but the response on fracking is particularly problematic because in this state, you know, we have a lot of revenue that comes from a big natural resource that we have. And J John Fetterman has called fracking a stain on Pennsylvania. Right. He's argued that we should have a moratorium on it. And he said, I'm going to quote him, I don't support fracking at all. I never have. That was just in 2018. Yet on the debate stage, he kept saying he was supportive of fracking and wouldn't address the moderator, the, the Lisa, the, the, uh, who was one asking the questions. Mm -hmm. I, I, she, she, I wanted him to address it, and he wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, that, it's, that was one of the, the worst parts of the debate, I thought, was when you just, when you just blatantly lie and say anything to, to try and score a point, when you just say, yeah, you're okay with fracking, when you obviously aren't, uh, that's when you lose so much of your credibility. He lost a lot there, I thought. We're not going to talk about Fetterman's condition. I think it's very clear to voters the situation with him. But there is something very bizarre happening with the press. And, and I believe that they're angling for a sympathy vote in this election for Fetterman. New York Mag had this headline talking about his vulnerability obviously a puff piece. And then this tweet from MSNBC that just popped up, disabled Americans have the right to be represented, represented and most importantly, to work. And that includes working for the U.S. government. And you have a picture of Fetterman there. You know, I, I, you see exactly what they're trying to do. We all see exactly what they're trying to do. It is quite rich coming from the same people who called Dr. Ronnie Jackson a liar when he said that Donald Trump was healthy and mentally sound, though. You know, I, I have tremendous compassion for what John Fetterman's going through. It happens to be my specialty area, heart failure, irregular heartbeats, strokes. These are difficult to recover from. That's not the issue. Yeah. I just wanted him to answer questions. Not just from me. He should answer questions from voters on the campaign trail. He hasn't done that. He's not addressed questions from the press in a group setting. I mean, I'd go out and do press gaggles all the time where there's a dozen cameras. There were 60 cameras yesterday when I was doing the Fraternal Order of Police uh, program, you know, talking about how we're letting criminals get away with hurting innocent people over and over again. And I, you know, I could, you could take questions and try to deal with the best um, uh, answers you have. That is how democracy works. Yeah. You ask questions. As voters, I, as a kind of candidate, answer them. You judge if I'm good enough or not. That hasn't happened in this campaign. It's the first time that on the debate stage, many Pennsylvanians were able to see the man who wants to be the next senator. And he wasn't able to defend these radical positions he's taken. That's the question. All the rest of this is really to the side. Sure. And the kitchen table issues, which are plaguing Pennsylvania, with crime in particular being a big one, is a massive problem. I mean, people are leaving Philadelphia. Businesses fleeing. The, the, the people in the suburbs, I mean, I'm right here, among Montgomery County, we don't go into Philadelphia as much as we should as just for a dinner or you know, for a play. That used to be commonplace. I could walk around Philadelphia when I was in medical school and business school. It was safe. Parents don't let their kids walk around anymore, and that bankrupts the city. We have to fix this. These are serious issues. My opponent is he's the most pro-murderer candidate in America. He's, just, he's argued to release 25 murderers against the will of other parole board members. Yeah. I don't know why he cares more about the criminals than the innocent. Yeah, his, his record is, is, is really, honestly, what we should be talking the most about. Uh, the debate aside, what he, what he stands for is horrifying with the state of the country right now. Both Biden and Fetterman are both attacking you for these remarks on abortion. There should not be involvement from the federal government in how states decide their abortion decisions. As a physician, I've been in the room when there's some difficult t conversations happening. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. So Biden tweeted this, or Biden's handlers, I should say, tweeted this out. If Dr. Oz gets his way, where does it end? Would he recommend local officials make decisions about cancer treatments, colonoscopies, or is this kind of scrutiny reserved just for women? What is your response to that? My positions remain the same. I'm pro-life, but I have three exceptions. Uh, and life of the woman being a very important one, rape and incest. Sure. Uh, and that's the position I've been saying the entire campaign. It hasn't changed at all. It was the same in the primary. The real issues that are plaguing Pennsylvania 
are the ones that I brought up in the bait stage, and were brought up by the moderators quite a bit. We have to deal with the economy issues that are bankrupting, especially seniors, because their Social Security steps don't stretch far enough. We've got to be uh, take a more serious in our effort to let cops do their job, which is all they're asking to do. That's why they endorsed me. When the Fraternal Order of Police unanimously supported me, they're not asking for anything really big except let them go out and help us keep our community safe. And I don't want to leave without talking about drugs, because John, John Fetterman wanted to decriminalize drugs. That's a real problem. Because when you decriminalize drugs, as was done in Oregon, you have a 50 percent increase in homicide rates in that state now. You cause problems. And the, the drug problem in Philadelphia and in Pennsylvania in general, which is primarily fentanyl, is caused by a porous border, a border that's open. Yeah. So drug cartels make a ton of money trafficking human beings and bringing drugs alongside of them. It is something else. Dr. Oz, we're about, uh, what, 12 days out now. We thank you so much uh, for taking the time. Good to see you. Thank, thank you.